Today in series of Doplex SQL interviews, we have with us Dr. Shriram Gorbole, who is the Director at Institute for Treatment and Research in Diabetes and Endocrinology, Pune. He is also associated with Jahangir Hospital in Pune. He has vast experience of around 25 years. His specialities include treatment and management of thyroid disorders, growth and development, hormonal disorders in women and osteoporosis. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Dr. S. N. Cooper Oration Award and Dr. Baliram Dube Oration Award. Thank you, Doctor, for this interview. Thank you so much. My so pleasure. Let's, yeah, let's begin with the first sure. question. Uh, why is it important to reduce risk, renal risk in patients with diabetes? I think diabetic uh, patients are at a risk for many complications. But if I were to pinpoint one complication that is very important, I would place renal risk not just for the therapeutic implications, but even as a prognostic factor. In fact, now it is clearly known that the excess mortality that you see in patients with type 2 diabetes is virtually limited to that subgroup which has diabetic kidney disease. And in spite of using therapeutic measures like ACE inhibitors or ARBs, which do RAS blockade, you still have 30% of diabetic patients going on to develop chronic kidney disease. And the mortality due to chronic kidney disease and diabetes is not just because of kidney disease per se, but it's because of cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So in fact, many patients with moderate chronic kidney disease would never reach end-stage renal disease simply because they would succumb to a prior fatal cardiovascular event. So that's the importance of detecting and reducing renal risk in people with type 2 diabetes. So moving on to the next one, uh, if the renal risk is so important, why is there limited information on the effect of different drug classes on renal risk? See, paradoxically, even though patients with uh, diabetic kidney disease are at a higher risk of morbidity and mortality, studies have shown that in fact such patients are less likely to receive risk factor interventions. And all major clinical trials in the field of diabetes still really recently used to exclude patients with chronic kidney disease. So we have very little factual information on the different therapeutic classes of drugs vis-a-vis -vis the renal risk in diabetes. Okay. Uh, so, Doctor, which are the renal endpoints that are looked uh, at the clinical trials? I would divide them as hard renal endpoints and soft renal endpoints. So, in hard renal endpoints, I would mean a significant, like say, a 40% sustained reduction in the EGFR the need for renal replacement therapy in the form of dialysis or renal transplantation and renal death. So this or a composite of this would be considered as a hard renal endpoint. Whereas a soft renal endpoint maybe would be progression to of albuminuria or a regression of albuminuria or the percentage of patients who move from one class of albuminuria to the other class. So this would be considered as maybe a soft renal endpoint. All right. Uh, so, doctor, moving on to the next one. Which are the drug classes which have been shown uh, in the reduction of renal risk in diabetes? Amongst the more recent drug classes that are now being used in the treatment of diabetes, I think two classes stand out for reducing the renal risk as per the clinical trial data. One is the SGLT2 inhibitors, which have shown even a 40% reduction in the hard renal endpoints that I was talking about, including the reduction in albuminuria as well. The other class of agents, I think, is the GLP-1 receptor agonists, which also have shown a significant reduction in the hard renal endpoints, but that is more driven by uh, lack of progression to, of macroalbuminuria. And to a very small extent, DPP-4 inhibitors like saxagliptin and linagliptin also have shown a reduction in albuminuria, though they don't show a reduction in the hard endpoints. All right. Uh, so, Doctor, lastly, I would like to know, uh, as Docplex is an online platform for doctors, yes. so how does that uh, help endocrinologists in um, spreading awareness uh, or about uh, well, I think you're doing a great job, not just endocrinologists, yeah. for physicians in general, because doctors are busy, they need to keep themselves updated, right. and there's an explosion of information. So, okay. we really don't know what to glean from and to mm -hmm. save, you know, sift fact from fiction or not so hard facts. So I think if you pick up those facts well and communicate it to the doctors, I think it's a great way for doctors to keep themselves updated 
at a time and place of their choice. They don't have to attend, you know, go move on to a different city and attend some conference. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for asking. Thank you.